We have so many factors conspiring on our planet right now that's threatening our environment, that's threatening the viability of ecosystems on a major scale, that's threatening the sustainability of human civilization itself. What kind of resource depletion is occurring in order to extract another resource? We can't drink oil. The burning of fossil fuels, fissionable radioactive material in our nuclear power plants. It's these pollutants that are emitted into the environment that I think may be a bigger concern than uh, a greenhouse gas like carbon dioxide. There are things that go beyond global warming and climate change that we need to be concerned about. Every fish on this planet is now contaminated with mercury, and that's something that we really need to worry about. New Energy Movement is a grassroots nonprofit organization with the mission to educate and advocate for the widespread embrace of new energy technologies far beyond fossil fuel, nuclear power, hydroelectric power, and even the renewable technologies of wind, solar, and biofuels. What we call new energy go beyond all of these and tap into sources of energy such as the magnetic field of the planet, the zero-point energy field that forms the background fabric of all space-time, new ways of using water itself as a fuel. It taps into other unseen sources of energy that pervade our space at all times, but we just have not been able to measure to this point. When people ask, well, Joel, what's the technology you think that is the closest to becoming commercially available? A real good candidate for that is a technology called Sonofusion, pioneered by a scientist named Roger Stringham. A half a cup of water contains enough energy to power the average home for 100 years. A half a cup of water for 100 years. That shows the latent power of the hydrogen that's in water. The Sonofusion prototype as is produces almost three times as much energy on the output side of the device as there is on the input that initiates the reaction. When you have excess energy output compared to the input, that's generally called an overunity device. Clearly, you can't create more output energy than input energy. It's just a matter of, of a conversion. And we haven't been very good to this point in time at measuring some of the, uh, the input energy that gets converted to practical and measurable uh, electrical or heat output energy. So the conventional energy systems really are much lower efficiency than something like these breakthrough energy technologies would be capable of. In a normal internal combustion engine, you'd be lucky if you get about 25% efficiency out of something like that. I think the consensus is that Nikola Tesla is the founding father of new energy. Tesla won the War of the Currents with Edison, DC to AC, but Tesla definitely lost the War of the Currents when it came to safe electricity or relatively coarser, I guess, form of electricity that, that we're using now. J.P. Morgan, the rich banker who funded Tesla for a little while, had already bought up copper mines because he, he saw dollar signs in the uh, stringing of copper wires all across the country and you know, all across every continent actually. Tesla had some very advanced concepts for how to provide wireless transmission of electricity and you can imagine what what that would look like if our landscape was no longer blighted by power poles and 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 thousands or millions of miles of wire strung everywhere. Just imagine if all that went away but we still had had electrical power at our fingertips, and that, that really is something that we could be doing right now. There have been a number of obstacles to the release of these advanced energy technologies into the public domain. First off, 
these technologies are highly disruptive to the status quo energy generation infrastructure. So when you consider that the global energy marketplace is worth five trillion dollars a year, a new technology that comes in that could potentially make fossil fuels and nuclear power obsolete is very threatening to those who are the power brokers behind the status quo. Too often scientists that are in the mainstream are resistant to examining the evidence uh, that is, has been announced from some of these breakthrough technologies and the pioneers behind them. Often it's simply because these new technologies threaten their own career along some lines of, of incremental improvement of some established path. So in most cases, uh, they don't welcome the announcement, and usually they don't even want to see the data. They just want these guys to go away. So mainstream science itself has erected a number of barriers to the advancement and release of these type of technologies into the public domain. So in 2007, I and a close colleague went to the U.S. Congress and introduced some draft legislation that we call the Energy Innovation Act to a number of senators and congressmen trying to get their support behind this. And one of the things that we found is that there's a tremendous lack of awareness and a high degree of ignorance of this field of alternative energy that embraces new physics. And really we didn't find much help from the legislative aides whose uh, jobs are to uh, investigate uh, various energy options and craft legislation around it. We were trying to educate uh, a number of folks who, who also had a strong bias toward those who lobby for the current energy infrastructure. And all of these folks are writing campaign contribution checks to a, a large number of the congressmen and senators. Well, so when a couple of guys from the new energy movement come in talking about these radical new disruptive energy technologies that we strongly believe should have public support, the feedback to us was, you know, we don't have a constituency, meaning we don't have people who are supporting this with financial clout to the legislators. So we are basically a voice in the wilderness. The funding is, is tied in with acceptance by academia because a lot of the um, venture capitalists won't, won't look at something that their science advisor says is impossible or they require that it have a patent and sometimes the patent office has been the stumbling point because, for example, the U.S. Patent Office has decreed that certain categories of experiments will not get patents. Anyone who does a serious analysis of where our civilization is headed if we don't make serious course corrections in our path comes to the conclusion that we are in for a very, very rough ride. In fact, we are collectively on a train that's headed toward a cliff. We all are stakeholders in the outcome of what happens on planet Earth. And none of us can isolate ourselves from a true global catastrophe. The economic abundance that'll result from this shared vision and free energy will uplift all elements of our society. And each of us that has families, uh, that has children, that have grandchildren, we know that, that we leave behind a legacy for these who follow. And what's that legacy going to be? Yeah.